Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today's episode is for anyone who feels just a little bit meh on Monday mornings. You're not ready to leave your job, but man, it could use a little more spice. Today, we're going to talk all things job crafting. With books, movies, or music, I'm a tough customer. If I'm not jazzed in minutes, I'm moving on to the next. There are too many choices for me to stick with something that is not lighting me up. A job, however, is not a song. It's not so easy to change. But unlike a book or a movie, which you only see as a finished product, a job is malleable. You can bend and shape it to your will. The way you do this is through job crafting, a term coined by Jane Dutton and Amy Rizneski. Job crafting is the act of customizing your job to better fit your motives, strengths, and passions. Your job, presumably, has a formal description, but that description's purpose is to capture what you need to deliver. Client outcomes, the financial reports, the HR processes. Your job, presumably, has a formal description, but that description's purpose is to capture what you need to deliver. Client outcomes, financial reports, HR processes, etc. But how you get that done, the tasks, the activities, the interactions you engage in, this is up to you to mold as long as you deliver those outcomes. I used to work in operations management for a logistics company. I had to ensure thousands of items made it onto shelves daily. Many of my peers did this through a focus on technology and process efficiency, but my strengths and passions align better to people. And so I achieved success by focusing on talent, hiring, training, and rewarding them to ensure the same outcomes were achieved. So if your job has you dreading Monday mornings, Here are five steps you can take to craft a job you love without having to update your resume. First, decide to act. Job crafting begins with a choice. You must choose to recognize that jobs are not jail. You are not a prisoner to the description on the page. Every job can be bent, twisted, or molded within its boundaries. Crafting is an action verb, so don't sit back and wait for something to happen. Choose to take action. Begin with a commitment to yourself. Repeat after me. I will take responsibility for crafting this job into something I love. Look at you, already making things happen. Next, choose what to chase. Job crafting isn't about changing your title, function, or salary. It's about infusing more joy into your days. And to infuse joy, you must first know what brings you joy. The tasks, actions, projects, conversations, interactions, and challenges that fuel your energy tank. It's about finding the things you love, that you're good at, and that you want to be known for. So start by asking yourself a few reflective questions. When do I find myself getting into a flow state? You know, that magical feeling of time having flown while you were wonderfully lost in what you were working on. What activities leave me feeling accomplished, productive, or proud once I finish them? What do I hope people seek my help or advice on? When do I find myself smiling, laughing, or just breathing deeply during the day? Whose job do I envy most, and specifically why? The point is to get really specific about the things that light you up. Take notes as you go, and look for patterns. What do you see? Maybe you discover your favorite activities include researching, learning, and problem solving. Maybe for you, it's mentoring, training, or coaching others. Maybe you discovered you get lost in spreadsheets, or is it slides? Maybe your joy comes from running the meeting or presenting the idea. There are no wrong answers here. As long as you're being honest with yourself, you're allowed to love whatever you love. Next, redefine a task's purpose. So now let's have a moment of real talk. Having clarity on what you love doesn't mean you can stop doing everything you don't love. You may still need to hit the boring update meetings or run those arduous reports or crunch those numbers. We all have to tolerate daily moments of blah. But what can you do to bump up the joy? Let's say you're a barista at a coffee shop and you spend your days dumping grinds and filling cups. It can get tedious. But pay attention to a few customers throughout the day. Watch them take that first sip of the latte you just made and see their faces brighten. You have a hand in re-energizing someone, improving their day even just a little bit. Focus on that rather than on the daily grind. You see what I did there? So now it's your turn. You may not love noodling around in that spreadsheet, 
But can you connect your noodling with a bigger outcome? Are you playing a role in helping your customers, in saving your company money, in helping leaders choose a new innovation? When doing a task you don't love, try shifting your focus from action to purpose. That small mindset shift can have a big impact on your mood and outlook. Next, map out a plan. Time to shift from commitment to reflection into action. So let's put your insights to work and build that action plan. Start by finding links between the things you love to do and potential positive outcomes for the company. If you love teaching, for example, don't just tell your boss you'd like to teach more. Find opportunities to train your team on skills or systems or strategies that add value to the company. If you enjoy research and problem solving, scour your company for live problems and propose to your boss that you play a role in sourcing solutions. In putting your proposed plan together, here are some questions you might ask yourself. What activities do I want to do more of? How could doing more of these activities benefit the company? What live opportunities are currently available to me? Whose support, permission, or sponsorship do I need? What, if any, resources will I need? And how will I track results? These answers will ultimately inform the conversation you'll have with your boss. If you've made your case wisely, it will be nearly impossible for them to say no. And finally, run experiments. As you start to shift how you spend your time, not every choice or change will be a win. And that's totally okay. Just maintain a mindset of experimentation. You may find that you're getting drained from mentoring too many people, or suddenly you have one too many clients in your portfolio. Or the company may decide that you've done enough research on the problem and they need you to shift gears. Job crafting is not a discrete activity. You don't do it once, but rather continuously. Seeing this process as an evolution, a series of experiments you'll run over time, will set you up for success on your terms my absolute favorite brand of success. Have a question I can answer? Check out all the links in my bio for ways you can reach me. You can also visit my website at leadabovenoise.com or follow me on the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn, where I share exclusive tips, videos, and musings. Join me next week for another great episode. Until then, thanks so much for listening and have a successful week.